they said an African competing in the Winter Olympics was impossible. People didn't take my story seriously. They said it would never catch on. I was too stocky. My dreams were unattainable. But my dreams are the dreams of every man, woman, and child willing to work tirelessly to achieve what we've been told is unachievable. I am the hope of a billion. The hope of every child who looks and sounds like me across the African continent. I owe it to them not to give up. I can't give up, I won't give up. For every one child with a dream, I am here to show and prove that anything is possible so long as you're willing to work for it. I am the hope of my continent. I am the hope of a billion. I'm excited. Um, I feel honored and privileged to have the opportunity to speak to you all today. I hope through my story, uh, you get empowered, encouraged, and inspired to go after your goals, to go after your dreams, to reach your full potential, and most importantly, to become the best version of yourself. Having a phenomenal skill in life is a plus, but to me, to really succeed in life, you have to have a phenomenal will. As I was introduced before, I graduated from UV in 2013 from the School of Business with honors in marketing and a minor in business management. I am the first of my family to graduate um, from a university. In 2018, I became Ghana's first Scout Olympian. I was never the favorite to win. I was the underdog and I have been an underdog my whole life. I had to fight and work hard for everything I have in life. Um, Please allow me to share with you um, all the things that happened in my journey leading up to becoming a father, husband, an Olympian, an entrepreneur, and a motivational speaker. To do that, I'll definitely share with you my screen so that you don't have to keep looking at me all day, but hopefully you can see some cool pictures as well. About 35 years ago, I was born in Ghana. When I was about three years old, my mother left Ghana to the Netherlands to prepare for a better future for myself, for my brother Kofi, in the meanwhile, my grandmother, Menka, uh, she took care of me, my brother Kofi, and eight other cousins. We lived in a super tiny room, slept on concrete floors, and had to share blankets with each other. Water would be dripping from my grandmother's ceiling while we were staying with her in that little room. When I was about eight years old, my grandmother told me something very important, something that I will never forget and has shaped me the rest of my life. Grandma Menka looked into my eyes. I sat on her lap and she told me something that again, it will change my life forever. She said, Akwasi, what you need for success is already in you. It is a matter of believing yourself, having the will to work hard and to never give up. My mother kept her promise as she was working in the Netherlands to find a job and a place for us to live. She worked two, three jobs. She came in January 1995 to Ghana for my brother and I. We left with her from Ghana to the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, that's where we thought life would be great. Everything would be perfect. Maybe this time during Christmas, we'll have more than just consuming a full bottle of Coca-Cola, full egg like we did in Ghana. Maybe this time during Christmas in the Netherlands, we'll be able to decorate a Christmas tree, be able to exchange Christmas gifts with each other. But life wasn't that easy. And as a kid, I really realized right away, life is never going to be easy. For 13 years long, we battled, struggled, and prayed for a Dutch legal citizenship to be able to stay with my mom who had a Dutch passport in the Netherlands. We struggled quite a bit. I had to work, my mother had to work job over job, so many different jobs to be able to raise money to pay for lawyers and different people so we could stay with her. When I was 15 years old, I discovered track and field and sport became my coping mechanism. It's where I learned to deal with winning and losing, where I made friends, where I could show my God-given talents and really truly be myself. When I was 17 years old, I became Dutch junior champion of 200 meter sprints. My coach, Sammy, was more than a coach to me. To me, he was a mentor. He showed me the way, taught me about self-discipline, and he truly believed that one day I could become an Olympic athlete. And because Sammy believed in me, I really started to believe in myself. But as family, we continued to struggle in the Netherlands. 
and had trauma. Basically, I was not allowed to go to school retreats. I was not allowed to go to international competition and represent the Netherlands, even though I was a Dutch junior champion. We struggled, got bullied, and it was hard for us to even share our story with other people. In 2007, I finally got a permit to stay in the Netherlands and in 2008, a Dutch passport. But through all this trauma, I had to leave. I applied for scholarship all over in the US and received so many schools that wrote me back, Michigan, Monroe, Arizona, Sun Devils, and a lot, a lot of other schools. But UV gave me the best possible chance and the best offer to not only focus on my dream as an Olympian and to succeed as an athlete, but also to succeed as a student athlete. So I traveled to Utah, a new place for me, never been before. And at UVU, I found a place that I could call home. Professors, student athletes, friends, people that I felt like was family to me. And at UV, I could also work on my academics, excel academically as well as excelling as an athlete and train towards the Olympic dream, which I still had in mind. In 2012, something really cool happened. Um, I received a call from the Dutch Olympic Committee saying that I was selected among the Dutch pre-Olympic four by 100 meter relay team for the London Olympic Games. I was so excited about that because I had worked so hard for that. I left the Netherlands, everything that I knew, my comfort zone to go after my dreams. A few months before that, I got injured. An injury, a tendon injury behind my knee made sure that I wasn't able to qualify with the final team to the London Olympic Games. I was devastated. I received a second opportunity. I was asked to hop in a thing called a bobsled. Yaman, Sanka, are you dead? If you don't know that quote, look up the 1993 move from Cool Runnings. Yes, that's where you probably know bobsledding for. I was recruited due to my speed as a sprinter for the first 50 meters, where my job was to push the sled as fast as possible, hop in it, tuck my head, and make sure at the end of the race, I break so nobody dies. I took my job very seriously because nobody died, luckily. <laughs> as we were training with the Dutch team for the 2014 Winter Olympic Games in Russia, um, we missed the Olympic Games with the B team that I was part of. And again, for the second time, I missed my Olympic dream again. I was walking around with my head down, walking around like basically like Quasimodo. I was angry, frustrated, devastated for the second time missing my Olympic dream again. So what was I going to do? Well, I had graduated from UVU, so I had a degree, but I couldn't find a job right away. So I looked on KSL for a job so I could pay for my cell phone bill and for the place that I was renting. And on KSL, I saw that you can make about $900 every two weeks as a customer service representative. Well, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into. I drove from Orem all the way to Salt Lake City through the snow on New Year's Eve. And that's when I found out that I was going to become a vacuum salesman. Not just any vacuum salesman, but the Kirby vacuum salesman. You know, the guys that bug you all the time, knock on your doors? Yes, one of those guys. I was going to become a vacuum salesman. Well, in January 2014, I sold 18 Kirby vacuums in 15 days. You may say, well, 18 vacuums, that's not a lot. Well, these vacuums go about averagely for about $2,000, even $3,000, depending on which set you get. In my second month in the business, I sold 32 Kirby vacuums in 18 days. And I became the number one vacuum salesman uh, of the whole US. And I received what you call a gold digger ring. Don't worry, it has nothing to do with Kanye West music. But if you can sell 30 vacuums in 30 days, you're like a king in the business. It takes about four or five years to have your own distributorship. Well, it took me five months and I had my own distributorship. I had about 30 people working for me. We moved with the office to Hurricane Utah, to St. George, and later to Arizona. As also, I learned how to be a leader, how to be a boss, and help other people also succeed. It was going so well that in 2015, my business had almost a million dollars in gross sale, selling vacuums door to door. So well that this lady had something super awesome to say. You may want to turn on your volume right now and listen to this lady. Okay, guys, this is Shirley Last. I sold the Kirby to her daughter, like I think a month and a half ago. She had the Kirby from 12 years ago, 10 years ago, Diamond Edition. We got her the newest brand new one. She's an awesome lady and she wanted to say a few things to everybody watching and especially my wife. 
The only reason I bought this Kirby is because of his muscles. <laughs> he has the best looking legs I have seen in a long, long time. <laughs> and I love this tight shirt that he wears. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> As you can see, okay, guys, this is it was going really well. But in 2015, my wife noticed something was bothering me. Finally, we had we were successful. We were not anymore, you know, students, you know, broken students that were paying student loan or the fact that um, I was an athlete who didn't really have money. But finally, we had a business where we were being successful. But she noticed that something wasn't quite right. So she asked me about it. And I told her, babe, Besides being married to you, never forget to tell your wife that, my number one dream is to become an Olympic athlete. I want to go after that dream. That thing is just on my bucket list. I have to do this. She looked into my eyes as beautiful as she is, and she said, Quaz, I don't want you to be 99 years old and still be whining about your Olympic dream. Let's go for it. So we moved from Arizona with the U-Haul, with all our stuff, drove 13 hours back to Utah, and picked up a new sport called skeleton yeah well if you don't know what that sport is it's basically lying down on a cookie sheet sled going about 80 90 miles per hour with your chin about a couple centimeters from the ice yes crazy exactly as you're thinking i was learning the ins and outs of the sport and i was recruited to do skeleton also again because of my speed over the first 50 meters i still had to learn how to navigate a sled down in the ice channel um, going that fast but things don't always go right in skeleton. Things like this can happen as it happened here in Germany a couple of years ago. This video will show you that. That might have been going too fast. I'll play it again for you. <laughs> Yes, that's me going head first with a sled that weighs about 70 pounds instead of four going backwards. Yes, that, that wasn't too much fun. But I continue to train hard and I continue to work hard towards my dream become an Olympic athlete and learn the ins and outs of the sport of skeleton. I believe that if failure was the only last step, there wouldn't be something called success. Um, you know, you have to start to get great but you don't have to start a degrade. After 17 years long dreaming of the Olympic games, working hard towards that, I finally made my dream become a reality. In 2018, I became my country's very first skeleton athlete. But before that, I traveled to Ghana. And to Ghana, I started the Ghana Bobsled and Skeleton Federation. Yes, again, if you've watched the movie Cool Runnings, the same thing happened to me. As I went to Ghana, talked to the government and talked to them about the fact that I wanted to take Ghana to the Olympic Games in this new sport. They looked at me and thought, guy, you are crazy. What has happened to you? This is a sub-Saharan place. Let's talk about boxing. Let's talk about soccer, but not about winter sports. I had to convince the Ghana Olympic Committee, the Ghana, the Ghana Sports Authority, and a bunch of other people to be able to get the paperwork in place for me to train towards the Olympic Games. And so I continue to do that and continue to inspire people all over in my country with this new sport that has never been done before in my country. And so in 2018, it finally happened. I walk into the arena in Pyeongchang with the flag of my country as high as possible and as proud as possible to be my country's first ever skeleton Olympian. You know, the, the flag that my country has shed blood for, my ancestors has shed blood for. It was finally my time to make them proud and make millions of kids proud as well in my country. My second goal now is to train towards the Beijing Olympic Games in 2022 where I want to become Africa's first ever Winter Olympic Games medalist. You may think this guy is crazy. Exactly right. If it was that easy, it would have already been done. My goal is to go after that. I call this goal of mine, the hope of a billion. And to end with this, I'd like to share a few of my quotes with you as well, um, to encourage you to keep moving forward, to keep pushing and to never give up. Ambition, isn't about thinking that you'll be great. Ambition is putting in the work to be great. Employ a growth mindset through hard work and dedication to create a love for learning and a resilient nature that is essential for achieving success in any part of life. 
Don't let temporary setback and failures keep you from giving it your best shot. If you give up, you will never ever find out what you're capable of. Remember, everyone gets knocked down from time to time, but only those who keep getting up actually succeed. How you react to any situation sets you up for success or failure. Learn to stay positive, even in the face of the toughest odds. On my journey to becoming the first black scalping athlete ever in history in the Olympics, I have found that a positive attitude can make it easier to navigate the world and feel more confident and happier even in the face of the tremendous odds. The way you bounce back from failure depends entirely on you. You can let setback take over you and paralyze you, or you can shed the shackles of self-doubt to rise above ashes and become your best self. Just because you are at a disadvantage doesn't mean your goals are not achievable. Yes, the journey may be harder, but that's going to make the, the victory even sweeter. So keep swinging, keep pushing. Setting goals is not a problem. You can sit right now in your bedroom or when it's January 1st, set a goal about what you want to succeed. That's not the problem, that's not the challenge. To reach your goals, you have to never give up. You have to keep going. You have to have self-discipline. You have to be relentless. You have to prepare for losses so they don't break you when they come because they are going to come. Along your journey, you're going to face challenges. Be ready for them. Those challenges are going to set you up for success. The only time you really lose is when you stop trying. Remember the place you came from and where you are now. Use that progress to keep breaking down any barriers that comes your way. Making your dreams come true requires you to accept your defeats and use them as your strengths. We wouldn't be where we are today if we hadn't, if we hadn't experienced failure or rejection somewhere along the way. Remember, Failure isn't an obstacle in your journey. It's a step forward towards your goals. Success feels way better when you know you've earned it. So don't let a few hurdles scare you. Think about how you're going to overcome those hurdles. When you work hard and succeed, you not only uplift yourself, but also gain the power to help others around you. And remember, don't listen to anyone who says you can't achieve success. Listen to your heart and to the voice in your head telling you that you can do it. Thank you.